Six Nations 2023, folks. The final round, Super Saturday. The first game, Scotland at home to Italy. Scotland look to finish the season with a bang after a couple of losses. Italy just looking to get a win because they are none from four thus far. Down to 14th in the world. That's one of the things about them having a kind of decent trajectory of late as they, uh, they actually got close enough to some of the other teams to lose points on the world rankings. But anyway, we'll go through some... Lineups, recent history, stats, predictions. You guys can let us know your thoughts on how things are going to go. For Scotland, the big news, I guess, is obviously the fact that Hogg and uh, Russell are both out injured for this one. So uh, Gregor Townsend has kind of been forced to make a few changes. But given the game, I don't think it's a bad thing, right? Um, there's nothing to play for in terms of like fighting for a title. So you might as well make a few changes. And um, that's kind of what they've had to do. The front row is still the, uh, the same. Schoolman, Turner and Fagerson. I mean, Schoolman, he's been busy, hasn't he? He's like the top prop for carries of all the props. Like, you know, I think Alice Genge carries a lot for England. Well, Schoolman carries more than that. And um, he's like one of the top carriers overall. He's like fourth or fifth or something. The guy is just... He, he loves a bit of contact, doesn't he? So that's your front row. Um, and they looked more effective than they, when their replacements came on last week, didn't they? It was an area of concern last week when Scotland changed the props. Uh, yeah, the scrum didn't seem to function at quite the same level. So they have made changes in that area as well with Sutherland. And now coming in as your prop replacements with uh, Ashman, hooker replacement as well. So uh, more changes to the bench than anything else. Uh, Skinner and Gray are the locking duo with uh, Richie Gray still out injured. So that's a, that's a good chance for Sam Skinner to get a crack because he's um, just been in the squad thus far. Jamie Ritchie switches back to the number six jersey because Matt Fagerson's down to the bench. He's the top tackler of the entire competition, but he's down to the bench. Uh, Hamish Watson is back in at seven. Uh, Gregor Townsend mentioned that he's basically been a bit unlucky. The game that he started is the game that Scotland had a red card and needed to bring him off early. And then uh, Jack Dempsey continues on at number eight. Uh, Jamie Ritchie looked a bit frustrated last week. He needs to kind of, I guess, keep things a little bit cooler. And he's been a bit guilty of conceding a few penalties. I know he's a great turnover merchant, but um, just needs to not flirt too much with the uh, the referee's whistle, I suppose. Uh, ben White and Blair Kinghorn are the 19 combo. So Kinghorn gets a crack uh, at 10. I would have liked to see him get a go at 15, just because I reckon he's a better 15 than he is at 10. Because then you got Ben Healy there on the bench as well, who's going to make his Scotland debut if he comes on. Um, I would have liked to see Healy at 10, but maybe it's a bit much to get him not only into the squad, because he's only a new fella into the squad, but then running the show at 10. And I know they see Kinghorn as kind of that utility guy. So I, I can understand why they've got Kinghorn at 10. But part of me just wanted to see Kinghorn at 15, personally. Uh, Sione Tuopolotu and Hugh Jones are still in the midfield. It's kind of no coincidence that uh, Tuopolotu's had three try assists. And Hugh Jones has got four tries, right? Um, they're not always necessarily one assisting the other. But I think a lot of the times it's one assisting the other, isn't it? Um, they are quite the combo in the midfield. Duhan van der Merwe and Kyle Steyn are the wings. Duhan van der Merwe is your top guy. The Six Nations for tackle busts with 27. Capuazzo for the Italians had 20 in the games that he played. But remember, he missed last week. So he might have been giving Duhan a run for his money if he had remained fit. But unfortunately, he is out. And then Ollie Smith comes in at fullback. So as sad as I am not to see Kinghorn get a crack at 15, I am keen to see Ollie Smith get a go because he's also a bit of an excitement machine. So... Uh, good to see him in the 15 because he's not had a chance thus far. Uh, other replacements, Scott Cummings still on the bench. Matt Ferguson, like I mentioned. Ali Price, Ben Healy, like I mentioned, will get his debut. And then Cam Redpath is there as well. So, um, yeah, a few injuries. Uh, they talked about Ben Healy in the pre-match stuff, saying how he, um, he's he been taking his time to get on board with how Scotland play. And he's, um, yeah, basically been very good in the non match 23 so we'll see how he goes when he does eventually come on uh for the italians they've also made uh a little bit in the way of changes but it's largely pretty scalable i mean fischetti nicotera and riccioni are the props and hooker so uh, riccioni was on the bench last week so he comes in for ferrari at tight head and fischetti still continues on at loose head he's the top dominant tackler of the six nations thus far so he's been a bit of a unit. So long may that continue. Nicotero has also been pretty good at hooker, uh, making tackles and getting turnovers and whatnot. Um, the lineout, I think, had a bit of an issue last week, but 
uh, provided that goes solid, then I think we'll be saying that he's had a pretty solid Six Nations campaign with Italy having a few guys out. Uh, Rutza and uh, Yakezi are the locks. So Yakezi gets a start this week after being on the bench pretty much every week thus far. So Kanone drops to the bench. I don't mind that. It's a bit of kind of experience building. It's nothing quite like getting a start. Uh, Negri, Lamaro, and Kanone are your six, seven, and eight. At six, Negri's made the most carries, I think, of any. Second most carries overall. I think first among forwards. So I think it's only Freddie Stewart who's had more ball carries than Seb. So, um, yeah, his work rate has been phenomenal. So he's been having a really good campaign. Uh, Lamaro has been leading from the front. Although there was another one who looked a little bit frustrated, didn't he, last week. He looked a little bit kind of rattled. Uh, Fusco comes in at number 9 up from the bench. And Paolo Garbisi continues on at 10. Menoncello and Brex are your midfield. And Menoncello, I thought, looked pretty dangerous last week. Uh, busting some tackles. Uh, Simone Jezi is there on the left wing. It's his Italian debut, so congratulations to him. And Pierre Bruno switches to the right wing. There's no Padovani this week. Bruno's a real weird one because, like, I think he's had 12 defenders beaten this season in the Six Nations, which is the second Italian guy after a couple of So it's a bit of a gap from 20 down to 12. But So that's good. Like, good offensive numbers. He's not quite Monte Ioane, but he's, you know, he's, he's doing his own thing. But then he's like made 11 tackles, missed 10 tackles. Like those are not good numbers. So yeah, defensively maybe not the most sound. And then uh, Tommy Allen continues on um, at fullback. Set up one of the Italian tries last week for Brex. So um, yeah, that's your starting 15. Manfredi will also get his debut as the replacement hooker when he comes on. Zani and Ciccarelli are there as the prop replacement. So Ciccarelli's back into the 23. I mentioned Nicola Canone dropped to the bench. Pettinelli and Zuniali. So two loose forward replacements and then just two back replacements in Alessandro Garbisi and Luca Morisi. So going for a 6-2 split is Kieran Crowley for this one. Um, Stats-wise, the Scottish two wins, the first two games... They only conceded three clean breaks in two games, which is phenomenal. It's excellent, excellent numbers. Very, very stingy on defense. So three defenders through, three clean breaks in two games. But then in the second, well, the two losses to France and Ireland, in each of those games, they conceded seven. Maybe that's just a different level of opposition. But the Scottish defense went from being very hard to break down to sadly, uh, yeah, having those kind of you can call them catastrophic failures if a clean break is generated but yeah not great the tackling percentage is generally pretty high um, but also concerningly the line out percentage has been getting worse every week down to 64 percent last week so certainly a fair bit to work on for Gregor Townsend and his guys the Italians have had heaps of defenders beaten they are a dangerous side on attack they're only behind France only like three defenders beaten behind France like France 124 Italy's 121, but they've also got the most yellow cards. Their um, penalties conceded is kind of middle of the road. They'll definitely need to keep 15 guys on the field against the Scots. They've conceded four more tries this season, albeit three against England. So that's an area they've proved a little bit vulnerable, although Scotland, I think, only scored one against Wales. So uh, it'll be interesting to see if Scotland kind of opt for that style of game. Or whether they try and kind of kick the leather off the ball and let the Italians run it back at them. Uh, the recent history between the sides, it's all Scotland. The last five games have all gone Scotland's way. Uh, you have to look back, I think, to 2015 to find an Italian win over the Scots, although it was at Murrayfield. Uh, the average score across the last five games has been 33-14. So pretty comfortable for the Scots, although the most recent one in Rome last year was 33-22. So at least that was like a try closer for the Italians. So I think we would definitely say the Italians have improved since some of those last five games, um, but then so have the Scots. So it's going to be an interesting one, although the Scots will go into it, as I mentioned, kind of as big time favorites. It is on at Murrayfield. It's a 12.30 local kickoff, which is 1.30 in the morning for us here in New Zealand, which is pretty awful. I'm still debating on how I'm going to plan my sleep around this game with two games to follow it. Do I just watch this one delayed? seeing there's not that much on the line. I'm still thinking about it. Uh, Angus Gardner from Australia is the ref. Predictions-wise, the bookies are saying the Scots by 15 points, and the rugby forecast algorithm goes a step further and says the Scots by 20. You guys, let us know your thoughts. Do you think the Scots are just going to kind of cruise to victory at home, despite the changes with the kind of veterans, Hogg and Russell, out? Or do you think the Italians, with something to prove, to try and avoid that wooden spoon, can uh, can get up for this one. You guys let us know your thoughts and um, yeah, I'll talk to you guys again soon. See you later.